I come today to bring you a very simple message. Iran must be free. The dictatorship must be destroyed. Containment is appeasement, and appeasement is surrender. The only practical goal is to support a movement to free Iran. Any other goal will leave a dictatorship finding ways to get around any agreement and to lie about everything. After all, a dictatorship that appoints as its justice minister someone who killed 30,000 people is telling you everything you need to know about the core nature of the dictatorship. This is a regime which thinks it's justice to kill 30,000 people. This is a regime which thinks it's justice to have an election where no one is allowed to run. This is a regime which threatens all of its dissidents, all of its critics, with jail at best and death at worst. So let's be clear. What is at stake? Now, I want to take you for a moment on a detour, because I used to teach history, and sometimes history can teach us. If you go here in Paris to Picpus Cemetery, which is actually near a metro station, you will find the grave of the Marquis de Lafayette. 100 years ago, this coming July 4th, General Pershing, the head of the American army in World War I, went to Picpus Cemetery to the grave of the Marquis de Lafayette. And he said, Lafayette, we have arrived. And what he was saying was that the French defender of freedom, the young man who in many ways was George Washington's favorite, had come to America 140 years earlier to ensure that French aid would help the Americans win their freedom. And we valued Lafayette so much that if you come to the United States House of Representatives, where I was once speaker, you will see only two paintings in the house. George Washington, the father of our country, and the Marquis de Lafayette. Now, why do I share this French-American story with this group? Because what Pershing was saying was that freedom is indivisible, that we had an obligation to return the great debt to France that they had created by helping us become free. And today I'm here because as an American who believes that every human being on the planet deserves the right to pursue happiness and is given by God the right to be free, every human being is an American concern. <laughs> Freedom is not safe anywhere as long as dictatorships like the current Iranian dictatorship are in a position to threaten freedom anywhere. The largest supporter of state terrorism in the world is the Iranian dictatorship. Even the Obama administration kept saying that, despite everything they did to kid themselves. I think it's fair to say that the Trump administration has much fewer illusion about the nature of the Iranian dictatorship. I think it's fair to say that Secretary of Defense Mattis 
in his years in the Central Command understands exactly who the Iranian dictatorship is. I think it's fair to say that the National Security Advisor, General McMaster, in his years of service in the Middle East, knows exactly who the Iranian dictatorship is. And I believe that the commitment to take steps to help you help all free people everywhere will be clear in this administration, and the pressures will grow every single year in the direction of supporting 1,000 Ashraf so that we have a network of freedom prepared to take over from a dictatorship of death. I've come here several years, and I have been impressed with the growth of the movement, the dedication of the movement, and I've been impressed with some victories that are very real. The 3,000 people you just saw in Albania are an enormous victory over the dictatorship. Remember, They, I watched for several years, and I was part of the group that would write letters and try to get the government to move, and under President Obama, that was extraordinarily difficult. People who knew the story, people who'd been involved. And the dictatorship was determined to kill everyone. And when they failed, they now have 3,000 warriors for freedom in Albania who understand that we have to replace the dictatorship, and that is a serious defeat for the current leadership in Tehran. Now, it goes deeper. Freedom ultimately involves charismatic leaders who communicate both a sense of hope, a vision of a better future, a moral cause, and an ability to connect with people. In our country, that was George Washington and his young supporter, the Marquis de Lafayette. In Italy, it was Garibaldi. I can tell you from years of having come here that in history, that the name of your president-elect, Mario Mrojave, will go down in the same tradition of fighters for freedom as Washington, Lafayette, and Garibaldi. And I, I hope she doesn't mind me saying this. I hope she agrees with me. It's not just because she is a great leader, although she is. And she's persisted in difficult times and in frustration when it took enormous patience. But she's a great leader because she has great followers, because so many of you are so dedicated. And when, you, when I drove in a little while ago and I saw the number of buses and when I stand here and I look all the way back at the number of people dedicated to freedom in Iran, I know that this movement is going to be a movement that goes down in history as one of the great examples of the human spirit defeating the evils of dictatorship. And so I thank each of you on her behalf for helping make her a truly historic figure because that's what you're doing. But of course, what ultimately makes someone historic is winning. And so we all of us have an obligation to recognize that while you have a great interest in winning because it's your country, we in America have a great interest in winning because freedom is threatened everywhere as long as this dictatorship stays in power. And so we are allies just as much as Washington and Lafayette. We are committed to the same side. And I'm here with my fellow Americans to pledge to you that we are going to take the story of a justice minister who kills 30,000 people. We're going to take the story of the continued support of state terrorism. And we're going to take the story of the hope that is embodied in the 1,000 Ashraf strategy and the potential 
that the next time that there is popular dissent, it will be across the whole country, it will be organized, and that at that point, unlike what happened last time when the American government shamefully did nothing, at that point, the Trump administration needs to be prepared and leaning forward and ready to do everything it can to help freedom win and dictatorship lose in the great struggle that is underway in Iran. So, I just want to close with this thought for some of you who may sometimes get weary, frustrated, wonder if anything will work. Freedom comes with enormous effort, and it doesn't come quickly. When George Washington agreed to serve as the commander of the American Army, he spent eight years in the field and two weeks at his home at Mount Vernon. For eight long years, he fought the British. And a number of times, we were almost out of money. Sometimes we were almost out of troops. We were on occasion almost out of ammunition. And yet, there were enough people who believed At his worst moment, we were down to 2,500 troops, a third of whom had no boots. They wrapped their feet in burlap bags, and they left a trail of blood as they marched. And they won probably the most important victory the day after Christmas, 1776. And if they had not won, the revolution might have collapsed. Now, I say that because I look out at this crowd you must have 40 times as many people here, 40 times, as Washington had in his entire army the night they crossed the Delaware. Think of that. You are mobilizing by your courage and your dedication and your commitment and your talking with other people. You're mobilizing an army, a bigger army than we had when we fought for our independence. And this army is bigger than the people in this room. I know. I see them all across America. So I believe we will win. I believe we will win together. I believe we will win for freedom. And I believe you will someday be proud to say you were part of what freed Iran. Thank you. Good luck and God bless you.